Good morning, everyone, again, and thank you for joining the fourth open air uh, monitor community call. Um, my name is Agilke Juanatu. As uh, mentioned, and I am research project manager and open infrastructure specialist at uh, Open Air, and I will be facilitating today's community call. Our focus today is on the latest indicators added to the institutional dashboard. So it's about institutions as well as a sneak peek at the upcoming features currently in development. Please uh, put uh, any questions you might have on, on the chat box and I will be putting also into the chat box the rolling minutes. And you can also uh, put your questions uh, there. And please note that this meeting is being recorded. And if you prefer not to be included in uh, the recording, kindly turn off your camera and microphone. Uh, we will have a Q&A session uh, and um, you're very welcome and encouraged to actively uh, participate. And uh, before we get started, uh, please allow me to introduce our uh, speaker, uh, Leonidas Pispirikas. Uh, Leonidas has been working as a data scientist and a scholarly communication technical expert for Open Air AMCE since uh, 2020-22. His responsibilities include overseeing the institutional dashboards in the Open Air Monitor service, actively contributing to Open Air's aggregation team, and managing the metadata validator service. Additionally, he, he represents Open Air in the Horizon Europe Craft Open Access Project, focusing on enhancing the technical and organizational infrastructure of Diamond Open Access Publishing, and participates in several other Horizon Europe projects on behalf of Open Air. Specializing in data science, uh, he focuses on predictive modeling and data visualization. His expertise encompasses bibliometric data, interoperability models, and international standards within scholarly communication infrastructures, showcasing a comprehensive skill set in the field of open science. So without further ado, Leonidas, the floor is yours, please. Thank you, Angeliki, for uh, the introduction. And I would uh, also like uh, to Welcome all of you to this uh, open air community call, uh, the fourth one. And uh, I believe it has been almost a year since uh, the last uh, community call that we have made for the institutions. Uh, therefore, I will, uh, in my presentation today, I will have an introduction, a general introduction on open air monitoring on the institutional dashboards and the dashboard on demands. Uh, I will briefly talk about the uh, data quality issues and the uh, open air graph in a nutshell, the, the source where we get the data in order to build the metrics and the indicators for the institutional dashboard. And then I will focus on uh, the new indicators that we have incorporated into the institutional dashboards and also the things that we're currently working on for the future. Okay. So first of all, let's say, uh, uh, answer a few questions uh, regarding the why. Why uh, should an organization, an institution monitor the research? Uh, we have uh, identified uh, three basic reasons. It's uh, the first one is to know thyself, to know the resources, the research output, what the research they produce, the open science uptake, to identify any collaborations they have, uh, to and to know the to get to know the visibility and the impact also uh, in the research landscape. The second reason is to after knowing thyself is to understand thyself, is to find uh, insights, gain pathways, and also foresee opportunities in the uh, research uh, landscape. And of course, uh, this all go through the, the monitoring and the assessment and the research assessment. And of course, the third one is to, the third reason is to position thyself in the recent landscape uh, because they will have uh, assistance. The monitoring will assist in the decision making processes of the institutions and the reporting. And of course, it will allow to have a storytelling regarding the, the the production, the research production of the institution. The second question, question is why open air monitor? 
Well, uh, first of all, uh, and most important, uh, it's open monitor. It's all about open science and open data. We have full coverage of open science, which goes beyond publications, several other research outputs from data set software and other research products. There is relevance and we work with the community as we co-develop the metrics and indicators with you. And of course, from the content provider, the data sources too, they include the incorporated metrics of the open air and the open air monitor. All these are fully embedded in the EOS infrastructure. Our methodology is based on four principles, principles as we acknowledge them. It's first of all, it's openness and transparency, where we use transparent methodologies and we present openly and clearly all our assumptions. We adhere to the first principle and international standards in order to have trustworthiness, reputability and public engagement. By using the open and graphs extensive data capabilities, which come from multiple authoritative data sources, and by collaborating with stakeholders for data representation and quality, we aim for the most comprehensive coverage, which lead to accurate and meaningful indicators. By leveraging established open databases and tested knowledge, classical knowledge technologies like machine learning and natural language processing, and by using operational, specific operational workflows in open air, we guarantee readiness and timely results. And of course, by focusing on meeting diverse user needs from researchers to policy makers, and by prioritizing the ease of use by having clear communication and responsiveness to the to feedback, we ensure an intuitive and engaging platform experience to all our stakeholders. Oh, open air monitor is one of the of open air services that is solely based in the open air graph. Here I have a, an image of the open air graph pipeline, where we can start from the left to see the several data sources that open air aggregates metadata from large trusted data sources such cross FDOAJ, data sites, PubMed, and other to the respective institutional and thematic repositories, grid systems of the institutions. We aggregate metadata and then we perform several technologies from enrichments, the duplication, and through all of these workflows, we have the finalized product, which is the open air graph, which can be used in third party services. And of course, by the open air added value services, which one of them is the open air monitor. And of course, through all these services, we get user feedback and we incorporate it to the workflow process of recreating and reproducing the open air graph. I'm passing the sources that contribute to the open air graph as I uh, have already mentioned them. Two important things regarding the open air monitor and the institutional dashboards. Uh, the first thing that we want to reassure is to have the best or as, as best, as good as we can, data quality and validation. And there are two frameworks that we can reassure this. First one is by uh, using the OpenOx platform in order to disambiguate the organization names. This part has two options. The first one is to deduplicate the organization multiple names as we aggregate them from the several data sources. And the second part is to identify any parent, any parent to child relationships regarding departments, school, school, and other institutions that might have such a relationship with the parent institution. The platform is uh, 
website is openox.openair.eu. We can there is several information there. We have uh, also uh, several training videos regarding how how to use the the platform. And of course, alongside the second part with the Open Air Provide, you can always get in contact with us in order to to get acquainted or to to use the platform for yourself. And the second part on the data quality is to the, for the open air to be able to have as much metadata, as much information as it can from uh, your integrated data sources, from repositories, open access journals, and any key systems that you might have at your institution. This can be accomplished, accomplished through the open air provide dashboard, where you can register and validate these data sources in order for open air to aggregate the metadata, the research products from, from these data sources. You need to comply with the open air guidelines for further details on registering and validating your data sources. We can discuss in after or uh, shortly or after the presentation and even uh, if you communicate it with us after the call. So what do we offer? in Open Air Monitor. We offer dashboards on demand. We have uh, four, four categories. We have dashboards for institutions, funders, and research initiatives through the Open Air Monitor platform. And we have also metrics and indicators for countries through the Open Science Observatory. For each organization, you have your own open air expert that you can contact in order to, to have the collaboration for your dashboard. So what do we mean when we say dashboard on demand? Well, everything starts from the beginning, from the open air graph, where, which is a common global asset and it incorporates the research output of the organization. From the open air graph, the open air experts acquires the metrics data for the respective organization, for the institution, and then passes the data through the dashboard, the community-led dashboards of the indicators that we have created with you. And afterwards, in collaboration with you, we create your own personalized profile, your own personalized dashboard for you to, to administer and showcase through the Open Air Monitor platform. So the sections on in the institutional dashboard. The sections are uh, separated in the research output, metrics, where we have indicators for publications, data set software, and other research products. You have the open science section where we have indicators on fairness, on access rights and open access routes, on general business models, on article processing charges, and on plan S indicators. We have the collaborations via project participations and via co-authorship and co-creation. In the impact section, we have the downloads and citations in the recent frequency and the sustainable development goals as a uh, separate section and the funding section where we have metrics and indicators regarding the grants and the projects. All these metrics uh, are presented with several breakdowns from research product types to field of science and SDGs classifications over time by countries, data sources, by funders and several other breakdowns. So uh, let's talk about the, the new indicators that we have incorporated in the institutional dashboard. We have incorporated the composite scores in the open science sector, where we have the openness score, which is the average share of open access research output. We have the findability score, which is the average share of research output with a persistent identifier. 
and we have the Fernish score, which we calculate, which is the average share of research output with metadata completeness. On metadata completeness, we have the title, publisher, abstract, year of publication, authors, and position identifier fields to be populated in order for the research output to be considered as complete in this category. And of course, this indicator signifies the presence of metadata and not the quality of the metadata. And of course, the exception is the position identifiers, which they have the specific or their own inclusion criteria. These indicators are presented as a number, as a total number, as a total proportion, the average share, and also the average shares by year. We can discuss the details on how we calculate them afterwards. In the collaborations sections, we have changed the indicators having the collaborations via, pro via projects broken down by country. And also we have the top 20 collaborating organizations by the number of project collaborations. And in the via co-authorship and co-creation subsections, we also have collaborations by country and the top 20 collaborating organizations by the number of co-authored publications. In the article processing charges section, first of all, APCs provide insights into the associated costs on making the research freely accessible. And uh, this is uh, increasingly mandated by many funding bodies and institutions. Thus, APC metrics are very important for the institutions to understand their financial dynamics and effects on open access publishing. And they also highlight their impact on the institution's budgets, such as uh, the shift from the subscription-based models to open access models. And of course, APC metrics allows institutions to budget effectively and allocate funds in order to support their researchers' compliance with open access mandates. And they also assist on the financial implications of publishing strategies by informing decisions about support for open access and negotiations with publishers. And of course, APC metrics can also reveal trends and disparities in uh, funding allocation across different disciplines. And this understanding will, can assist the institutions and uh, in order to, to have a policy development or change the distribution of resources in order to ensure equitable support for the researchers across all disciplines. The update that we plan to incorporate into the APC section, uh, we're going to have APC metrics for uh, indicators, first of all, for APCs versus the publications with APCs versus the ones that are under transformative agreements. And of course, we are going to have uh, the two levels of APCs that we get from OpenAPC. First of all, we have the APCs that are reported to OpenAPC by any co-authors institution. And we, have, we will have the APCs reported by the institution in OpenAPC. The difference between these two levels is that the first one, in the first one, we cannot identify if these APCs were actually paid by the institution because uh, here we gather, uh, apart from the APCs that reported by this, the institution, also APCs from publications that have been reported by other institutions. And then the second level, we can identify the APCs that were actually paid by the institution. The uh, Open APC platform is a platform that covers the APCs and transform transformative agreement details from the institutions. And it depends solely, solely on institutions supplying the APC data. And it is a very important step for the institutions in order to have 
better results and the better results in the, the open air monitor and the APC subsection regarding the metrics and indicators. Here I present to a few charts regarding the APCs, which are, have not been incorporated yet in the open air monitor. In the APCs versus under transformative agreement, we can see the peer reviewed publication trends in the right, where we can see the publications with the APCs and the ones that are under transformative agreements by year. And uh, to the left, we have the breakdown by the level one of the field of science and technology. There are also several other charts that will be generated. For example, we will also have the level two field of science and field of science and technology. And in the in the trends chart, uh, you can uh, also see that the publications under transformative agreement start to showcase after 2020 on 2021 due to the Plan S and the transformative agreement, which is the next topic that we will discuss after the APCs. And for the APCs metrics, this uh, indicated charts. Currently in Open Air Monitor, we have uh, APCs metrics only for the first level. APCs reported to Open, AP, to open APC by any co authors institution. And our uh, Next incorporation will be the APCs that are, have been reported by the institution in Open APC. We have the total APCs paid by Field of Science levels one and two. We have the gold versus the hybrid open access publications, peer reviewed publications by total APCs, and also we have the top 20 journals by the total APCs. And we are, are also going to be in the metrics and indicators on the average APCs per publication. So let's move to the Plan S indicators. Plan S is an, initi an initiative that is led by Coalition S. It stands at the, at the forefront of a major shift in open access publishing. And uh, especially it stands uh, at the forefront since its requirements became effective from 2020 and onwards. It's a pivotal force which reshames the dissemination of publicly funded scholarly research. And it uh, ensures the immediate and universal accessibility of research output and marks a new chapter in the narrative of scholarly publishing. So, researchers that, that are funded by members of Coalition S must publish their research findings in open access journals or open access platforms. They have specific routes that they need to follow. They can publish in open access journals. They can deposit in recognized and acknowledged repositories. And they can engage with transformative journals and agreements that progressively will shift towards full open access as the Plan S indicates. Plan S initiative indicates for the transformative journals. There is transparency and accountability regarding publication fees. The Plan S endeavors to set a standard for fair and reasonable open access publication fees, fees confronting the traditional financial models that have been dominating scholarly publishing for the during the previous years. And of course, uh, it emphasizes in the importance of licensing, particularly advocating for the use of the Creative, Co Creative Commons attribution license, the CC BY license, which uh, is a mandate for the specific publishing. And CC BY licenses enhance the openness of research and of course, the reusability of scholarly works with appropriate, of course, attribution to the original authors. So an, an indicative numbers and charts for the, for the Plan S metrics, we're going to have peer-reviewed publications in Diamond journals, 
peer-reviewed publications under transformative agreements, peer-reviewed publications in transformative journals, and gold open access peer-reviewed publications with APCs. We have top research funding organizations by number of peer-reviewed publications published in planners compliant journals and peer-reviewed publication, publications published in planners compliant journals by fields of science level one. These are indicated metrics. They, were, they will be incorporated in Open Air Monitor by the end of June. And uh, we have taken them from uh, the Iris Monitor, the National Open Access Monitor of Ireland that we, are, we have built for Ireland. It's currently in the pilot phase. And after my presentation, I will also share with you a sneak peek to uh, the to this platform also. So as I have already said, plan planet's metrics focus on the period from 2021 onwards and the publications that are published in Diamond Open Access Journals transformative, are under transformative agreement in transformative journals. They are gold open access, follow the gold open access route, or they are published in other journals. These are the, uh, the level of uh, categories that we will we present the respective metrics. So our next steps, as I have already told you, is to have the planet's metrics available and the updates on the APC's metrics by the end of June. And regarding the future enhancements, we are currently developing and are also discussing with the community, with you, uh, to incorporate uh, further incorporate interdisciplinarity indicators, enhance the collaborations, focus on the quality influence and impacts of the producers on the produce produced research. And of course, to our goal is to enhance, further enhance the fairness, the metrics of the fairness. Okay, so this is my this was, was my presentation, and uh, before I finish, let me give me a few minutes to give you a sneak peek of the National Open Access Monitor of Ireland that we have currently. On the way. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes, we can. Yes. Okay, thank you. So, this is the, the home page of the National Open Access Monitor of Ireland. Uh, this has been a, a collaboration with the island, with the country of Ireland. Basically, they published, they had a public tender uh, in the summer of 2023, and the open air won with their proposal, the tender, and we have built and we have developed this National Open Access Monitor specifically for Ireland. In this uh, platform, we have four types of monitors. First of all, we have the national monitor, where we have dashboard, the dashboard of the whole country. The topics are the scholarly production, the open access evolution, which is a, a section that I would like to to focus a little bit and it's something that we're also currently working to incorporate further incorporate in open air monitor where we have uh, where, where someone can uh, watch can see the evolution of open access during every month of the update of uh, the open air graph uh, the open air graph which is a source of all our Services updates its uh, data every month. So by through all these charts, 
you can see the open access evolution from access rights to open access routes. That goes month by month. We have several other sections on access rights, open access routes, on FAIR, on planners and APCs indicators, cross-country for the national monitor, and the academic impact section is with the downloads and citations. The other types of monitors are the ARP monitors for RPOs, research performing organization for institutions, RFO monitors for funders, and we also have research and monitors where we present indicated metrics for researchers and also we have the repository monitors where we have dashboards for the data sources, the repositories that have been registered to open air through the open air provide platform. So thank you very much. This was uh, just a sneak peek. If you need further details regarding not only Open Air, uh, of course, the Open Air Monitor and the Iris uh, Monitor platform, uh, you can ask anything you want. Uh, we, we can have also a discussion after our call. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Leonidas, for this thorough and uh, comprehensive uh, presentation. Indeed, in the details and insights were really very helpful to del delve into the into the, the service. And um, we already have some uh, questions. Yes. Um, I would like to encourage also uh, more people to um, type their questions. But just before uh, jumping into the Q&A, uh, just I would like very briefly to uh, to highlight uh, regarding the article processing charges that you also mentioned how it is like important for the institutions to share their APC information with the uh, open APC and uh, in the form of the questions like why is this important what will they gain this, just a highlight from uh, my side but I think also it's important as you mentioned uh, in the presentation um, do you have anything uh, more to add uh, that? yes also, uh... we yeah, sorry, please. I just uh, thank thank you, Geliki. I would like to add to notice it to notice again and add that it's very important for the institutions to register the open the APCs data uh, to open APC uh, because uh, this way they will uh, get the the best quality in the indicators and the metrics from the open air monitor service because. This way, we will be able to identify the APCs that were actually paid by the institutions because of the co-authored publications with they have that they have APC data, but uh, not it's uh, you not you do not know that uh, which institution paid for these APCs unless the institution itself registered this data into Open APC. That's really interesting. Thank you. Thank you for uh, clarifying uh, uh, that and highlight highlighting it again. So yes. um, I, I suggest that we move. I oh, sorry. Yes, I see in the Q&A section first the question. Yeah, we have um, on the rolling minutes of the agenda is in the chat box. We have a question from Julia from the Grasp OS project. And I can uh, read this out loud, uh, I guess it's easier. So the question is, some colleagues uh, that have the open air monitor dashboards have found data that are not corresponding to those data in open air explore. And the dashboard is in beta. Okay, so uh, yes. The process uh, to for an institution to have a dashboard in open air monitor is uh, first uh, we create the dashboard in the beta platform of the open air monitor where we can see a sneak peek of the desk of the dashboard the institution can see a sneak peek of the dashboard the indicators the uh, the topics then we have a, a call with the people from the institution the managers 
from the institutions for the open end dashboard. And afterwards, we create the dashboard in the production environment where the production environment has the most updated and accurate data that aligns also with Open Air Explorer. The beta platform, uh, often as it is a beta platform, it has uh, data obsolete data that it's not updated monthly or as the production platform. Thank you, Leonidas, uh, for, for the answer. And uh, then uh, we have uh, a few questions from an anonymous uh, participant. Uh, of course, they're very welcome. Yes. They want to um, of course. Uh, unveil themselves. Uh, but um, I can read uh, the questions uh, again. So the first question is, is the dashboard freely available for the institutions? If not, what is the pricing? And this is the first question. Well, uh, for until now, the dashboards have been freely available for the institutions as uh, the whole project has been financed, has been funded by uh, projects that uh, Open Air participated. Uh, we have, uh, from now on, and we, this is something that we will communicate with all our stakeholders and all the institutions one by one. There will be a pricing model. Uh, I can give you further details on one-to-one uh, -one sessions because uh, we are in the, about, we're about to finalize and uh, showcase our pricing model in the next uh, weeks, maybe two weeks at the most, and we will communicate it with you one by one. Thank you, Lomitas. I think that's a very good question. And with regards to the pricing, and I guess more people might be interested in that. So please feel free to reach out to the team. And uh, as now it's, as Linda said, the, uh, the, it is still under development, uh, the model. So we are done with this question, right? So uh, we I move forward to the uh, yes. next one, uh, which is, is the metrics uh, is remer is the metrics are configurable? So I guess if the metrics are configurable, this question, and can we create the dashboard according to our own defined metrics? Well, the metrics are not configurable, and uh, I mean you cannot uh, create your own charts uh, through the platform. We have specific metrics of course we can create in collaboration with you if you your own defined metrics if you define the metrics that you want and we can produce them we will create them for you in order to have them to your dashboard but it's not something that we uh, offer uh, through the platform for the managers it's something that we can do in our one-on-one uh, -on -one session we have uh, with uh, every institution. Thank you. Uh, and the next question is, is there an API or code freely available so that the institutions create the dashboard and host the monitor uh, on their own servers? And if yes, is there a, tuto a tutorial or a documentation about how to? Yes, currently there's no API. Uh, currently we offer the, the option to embed uh, each chart through an iframe to your platforms in order to, to, to be able to, to produce the charts, to reproduce, revisualize the charts there. Uh, we plan to, to enhance this uh, uh, functionality, to enhance the embed, embedding functionality, and also have a short tutorial in the next weeks. But uh, currently, we don't have a specific API for this. And um, the next question is, is the data retrieved from open air graph? Can the institute 
institutions use their own data also? Well, the data is retrieved from Open Air Graph, which is updated monthly, and the institute uh, cannot use their own data out of the box. They can use their own data by through Open Air Graph by registering their data sources in the Open Air, in Open Air Provide, their repositories, their key systems, or any open access journals they have by registering them, by adhering to the open guidelines and registering, registering them in open and provide, they will be incorporated into the open air graph. Also, this is something that is uh, very important. I mean, it might be like a basic step, step but it is so crucial for the whole process, the uh, registering uh, to the to the uh, graph as you as you mentioned yes and um, it is an important step to the to have a more qualitative metrics mm, yeah yeah that's very true thank and you and the simpler just a simpler the most simple example i can give is uh, uh, if you have uh, in your data in your repository if you have if an institution has in their on the repository a preprint or postprint of a publication which is open access and the publication itself is closed access at the publisher. This is something that uh, in Open Air Monto we can identify it and present it in the chart. Because through the Open Air Graph and the duplication process, we identify the publication that is closed access but has been found open access in the repository. This is the simplest, the most simple example, the simplest example I can mention. Yeah, definitely very pertinent and, and crucial. I thank you for this, uh, providing this example. I think it, it is helpful, at, at least for me. Uh, um, so I move for to the next question. Um, and the final question, and in the meantime, please feel free to um, ask, uh, ask Leonidas hear more questions yes, of course. he's ready <laughs> to take up as uh, uh, many as possible i'm kidding so how do you identify the transformative agreements of the institutions transformative agreements well basically this is data that uh, institutions or funders provide to provide to Open APC or to us. This is something that we can uh, we need to to get from uh, the institution, from uh, from a funder, or from Open APC if these organizations have put them have uh, registered them there. Thank you, Leonidas, uh, for. Uh for the answer, and I see uh, Maria Daudaki, she has her hand raised. Maria, would you like to? Yes. Hello, Maria. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi, Leo, I know you for ages, let's say. Yes, indeed. From Technical University of Crete. Um, we are, let's say, at the beginning of uh, implementing Monitor. We haven't concluded yet. But a clarification to the person asked about transformative agreements. All transformative agreements are registered in the ISAC registry of transformative agreements. Uh, so you can find information there about all the transformative agreements nationally. And, and uh, it's a global, uh, let's say, registry. It's not a national one, let's say. That's it. <laughs> yes, and it, this is something that uh, we are uh, currently working and reviewing in order to see how and if we're going to get data from there. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's why I mentioned it. Also, the guys there uh, collaborate with the Open APC that you, you, you also use. So okay. get in touch mm -hmm. with them. Uh, to see how uh, how you can harvest the Isaac uh, registry. Thank you, Maria. Thank you. Many thanks, Maria, for the intervention. <laughs> so, 
please, any other uh, comments, questions, um, thoughts, ideas? Very welcome to um, discuss them over here. If there are uh, still maybe not now uh, questions, um, may I uh, ask um, a follow up question? I, I'm not sure I, I got that completely, uh, Leonidas, about the the question on the on the API that there is currently no API, but uh, you mentioned that there is a possibility that uh, for an embed embedment, is this correct word? Yes. Uh, could you elaborate a bit more? I'm not sure I got that with regards to the code and how the whole process is. Yes, give me a minute. Yes. Ah, but I saw now just uh, so another question. So maybe I have to prioritize the question from uh, Anon. Uh, or maybe if it's if it's quick, you can uh, briefly uh, reply to my question and then we can move to the next one. Yes, let me share my screen. Thank you, Leonidas. And this is a functionality that we are going to incorporate soon. Also sounds fantastic. Monitor. Yeah, sounds actually very helpful and quite fantastic. Yeah. So I would like to be sure I am on the, you know, Let's say we have this chart, for example, here. There's an option on the top, on the bottom left in bed. And there's a source code here. This is embedded by iframe to another portal, let's say. Mm -hmm. Quite straightforward. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. That's quite straightforward. OK. But thank you for, for that. So. Anon um, asks, who is typically involved in the, in setting up the dashboard in a university setting? Uh, maybe managers from library, research office, ICT, or from your experience? Mm. I guess it's, <laughs> but maybe you- Well, you know, usually, you know. yes, usually there are people uh, either from uh, research departments that uh, the university has regarding the research, research offices, research assessment or monitoring. And of course, uh, also from libraries, because usually libraries focus and uh, work on uh, the research assessment and the monitoring. It uh, depends on the on each institution. And of course, uh, institutions can have several managers. They can have managers, they can also have members. Because I have, yes, I have not uh, discussed about uh, these uh, these things. Uh, the, we have user levels. Uh, the dashboard has uh, three access levels: the public, restricted, and private. The topics and bits from the topics to each indicator. You can set these rights. Uh, the public right is for freely for everyone to see. The restricted access is only for the people that are signed in. The platform in open air monitor have and have member access to the dashboard or are they or if they are managers and it uh, also we have the private access where uh, it's uh, solely for only for uh, the managers of the dashboards and not the members and the managers can invite also other managers and other members other users to become managers and members or members That's very interesting uh, option as well. And are there any further questions? There, There is one question that is being typed right now as we speak, yes. so. <laughs> And thank you, Anon. So how much uh, support is usually needed from these dashboard managers, Leonidas? Well, I don't, I, not much. It depends on, uh, 
to see to view the dashboard, evaluate the topics and the metrics, uh, discuss with us and with their team, of course, if they want to see other indicators or other metrics, if they want to add uh, such things, uh, the, also they can evaluate and give feedback regarding the data quality. I don't know. Uh, I mean, okay. Uh, for example, uh, they can see the number of of publications, of peer-reviewed publications, of open access publications, they can also compare it with the numbers that they have uh, from the repository or from other sources. But support solely based on uh, the dashboard, there's not, it's not needed. It's mostly up to them to, to, to see and verify with us the, the data quality. And mm. mostly this is done to the, in the beginning. And of course, there is uh, the part through the OpenOx platform where they disambiguate their organization name and parent-child relationship. Uh, apart from the initial, the duplication of the multiple names, which uh, is performed by us, uh, there is typically, typically they can uh, go through every six months or so to see if any diversities came up through the duplicates in order to perform the duplication. Yes, I think it's also a bit uh, difficult to assess the person months in that sense, but uh, I think your uh, response is very understandable, but also, Anon, if you need some more uh, like details, just feel free to, to reach yes, out course. and we can have one-to-one -one meet, meet, meetings because I understand it's, you know, when you want to uh, get into a new, like a new service, you have like all these uh, small questions uh, that <laughs> need to, you know, clarification sort uh, and so on. So yeah, please. Mm. Any more questions uh, for Leonidas and the monitor? Uh, service and specifically the institutional dashboard for today is there anything that you would like to highlight before we wrap up leonidas for today something that you really feel that this is that we need to take as a as a thought as we leave or for the next call something, I don't know, do you think it's really crucial? Although we we mentioned a couple of important things already. Well, uh, based on uh, what we presented today, the first important thing is to, to register the, for institutions to register their APCs in Open APC. And then it's uh, the, of course, the communication that we are going to have in the next days regarding the business model that we will follow. This will be on one-on-one -on -one communication with its registered institution. And of course, any user or institution that wants to, to, to get a dashboard, to get to, to get to know the service, to see how it will work, can reach us directly from the get started button we have in the, the, the platform, the open monitor site, or by, by email. That's amazing. Thank you so much. And following Harris, uh, Harry Dimitropoulos uh, post now on chat. So surely, thank you for uh, participating today at our community call and really looking forward to already the next one. <laughs> it's scheduled uh, for uh, July 2nd. And if you click on the link that uh, Harry's uh, sent on the chat box, you'll be able to uh, register. Thank
Thank you so much, Leonidas, for your time, thorough presentation, comprehensive responses, and thank you everyone for joining us today and sharing with us your concerns and thoughts and comments. Really looking forward to seeing you the next community call, okay? Till then, take care and uh, please reach out for any, even the smallest uh, idea or problem you have. We're here to help you out. Okay, take care, everyone, and see you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. See you. Bye-bye.